Hello everyone, welcome to our live stream, our last one of the year. Today we're going to be making a really special recipe for cauliflower steaks with caramelized shallots and an herby tahini sauce. This would be a great addition to your holiday table as a side dish or as a main dish. I'm going to walk you through the recipe, give you some tips about it, and also chat with you guys about your holiday cooking questions. So if there are any technical issues that come up, please let us know in the chat. Max is behind the camera and on the laptop, and so he will try to address anything that comes up. If it's an audio issue or a visual issue or anything like that, let us definitely know. And then if you have questions, you can pop them in the chat box and occasionally I'll be able to see them. I've got a screen down here and be able to respond to them. And then we'll also reserve some time for questions at the end once the recipe is done, as well as like if there's downtime with the recipe, I will answer questions then too. Uh, super cool fade in podcast, just bought the ingredients. Very exciting, hope you are cooking along. And um, I'm gonna get started, but I would love to have everyone chime in and let us know where you're tuning in from while I get started on the recipe. Um, for those of you who don't know, I live in San Diego, California, so that's where we are. All right, so cauliflower steaks, that is kind of the main part of the meal, um, or I guess I should say the base of the meal. And in case anyone's confused, I say cauliflower steaks because we're cutting them in steak style cuts. I am not a crazy vegan who thinks that this is gonna taste like steak, so please don't ask if this tastes like steak or ask me why I've called it cauliflower steaks. This is what it's typically called when you slice it into steak style cuts. So I've already done a couple for you. I'm just gonna show them. You wanna pull up the smaller camera? Yeah. I've already done a couple for you so you can see what they look like. I like to cut them three quarters to one, qu or to one inch thick. Uh, I'm going to show you what I, how I do that as, as well with this whole cauliflower. Um, hi from Dublin, from France, Columbus, Ohio, Northern Maine, Fort Myers, Florida, St. Paul, Minnesota, Seattle, so many different places. Super cool. Thanks everyone for tuning in. It's really cool to see how international the Rainbow Plant Life community is. Sweden, Australia, SF, Croatia, super cool. I love to see it. Awesome. Okay, so for the cauliflower, usually you're gonna have like this, uh, the leaves and stuff at the bottom, and you also have this stem here. So you wanna slice this off, but you don't wanna cut the core out because then the steaks won't hold together. Um, these leaves, by the way, are edible. If you wanna save them and saute them, you could definitely do that, but we do not need them in this recipe. And I'm just gonna slice off a little bit more of the stem Pompadour France. Well, that's about the coolest name ever. Pompadour France. I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly because I don't speak French. And for cauliflower steaks, you're usually going to get the best results with a large cauliflower. You can do it with a small cauliflower, but um, you just won't get as much out of it. Um, I did slice a small cauliflower um, to show you what it looks like. So these are the small, the small heads, no, the small steaks from the small cauliflower head. So you can see they're pretty tiny. Um, but if you're just making this for one or two people, maybe three people, that's also fine. Okay, so we've got most of our leaves off now. And then I'll just show you how I cut it into steak style cuts. Okay. Lexi says, I made your cream of cauliflower soup yesterday. It is phenomenal. Thank you for sharing. Thanks so much. I'm so glad you love it. And that actually brings me to the point I was going to make in a few minutes, but we'll see that when I cut this into steak style cuts, that uh, there will be a lot of loose florets. I'm not going to roast them today in this recipe because I need some space on the sheet pans to add the chickpeas to the recipe, which is going to kind of be our protein source. But if you save the cauliflower florets, They'll stay good in a bag or a container in your fridge for four or five days. And then you can make my cauliflower soup using the florids. You could make my crispy cauliflower tacos using the florids. You could blanch the florids for like two minutes and then freeze them. And then you can use them in smoothies or curries or soups or whatever you want. 
So for the steaks, this is what the bottom looks like now. We still have a little bit of the stem left. And I'm gonna go through the middle first, just all the way down. So this is what it looks like now. And then again, like three quarters to one quarter inch. I'm not gonna get out my measuring tape, but uh, I'm gonna kind of eyeball it. All right, so that one looks really nice. It might be a little bit thicker than the other ones, but you know. It is what it is. This one kind of came apart as you can see. And the thing about this recipe is that like, yes, the steaks make for a beautiful presentation, but at the end of the day, if your steaks aren't perfect, it's still gonna taste delicious. So don't freak out too much if your steaks don't look perfect. Um, I think that's good for us today. We've got four and it's just me and Max at home. So I'm gonna save the rest of these florets. As again, I mentioned, use these to make my cauliflower soup, to make a smoothie, to make crispy cauliflower, whatever you want. Um, just don't let them go to waste. The reason I'm not roasting them today is because um, you don't want to overcrowd your sheet pan. So you could actually fit maybe six steaks across two sheet pans, but if you add all the florets, you're gonna overcrowd the sheet pan and they're gonna end up steaming rather than roasting and getting that nice caramelization and brown, like beautiful brown tenderness. So that's why I'm not adding the florets today. Um, I'm also not adding them because we're gonna add a can of chickpeas to um, the sheet pan so that we can like roast it all together. And so if you were to add the chickpeas, the florets and the steaks, you would have like just too much going on. Um, so let me clear off some of this cauliflower to make space for myself. Um, Max is gonna be pulling up questions occasionally so that I can see them. We've got a new setup for this live. Hopefully it works out great. Thank you so much, Anastasia. It's so nice you're tuning in from Greece. Um, okay, so for the chickpeas, this is one can of chickpeas that I have drained and rinsed. Of course, if you cook your own chickpeas from scratch, totally fine to do that. And when you roast chickpeas, if you've never done it before, um, they get crunchy, it's so good, but you do wanna make sure you dry them really well so that they can crisp up. If they have water on them, they won't really. So I like to just put them on a dish towel like this and just like really gently dab them. Pro tip, if you want them to be super crispy, like the crispiest possible, a salad spinner actually is the best way to dry chickpeas, but I don't really know where mine is right now. <laughs> so this, is, this method works well too. Heather says, Nisha's kofta recipe is my favorite. So yummy, it does take a bit of time, but so worth it. Yes, the malai kofta, that's one of Max's favorite recipe too. Um, it's just like gourmet Indian food that like you would get at a restaurant, but it's hard to get malai kofta vegan at a restaurant. And so it's just, it's so good. Uh, Purva asks, do you prefer canned chickpeas or home soaked chickpeas in day-to-day -day life? Which one is healthier? Um, I mean, the taste of, of, of dried chickpeas cooked from scratch is definitely better. Um, I try to do that when I can, but it, you know, I don't, it doesn't always line up with when I'm making a recipe. So if that's the case, I'm totally fine using canned chickpeas. Um, especially if you're going to roast them or cook them some other way, instead of just plain canned chickpeas are fine. I don't love canned chickpeas plain. Like I would never put plain canned chickpeas on like on a salad without doing something else to them. But, um, for this particular application where we're roasting it with salt and pepper and olive oil, it's gonna be delicious even if it's a canned chickpea. All right, this should be good enough for our chickpeas. If you see any loose skins, you can take them off, but you don't need to like peel of the chickpeas by any means. Uh, Kyra or K 
Kara, I'm not sure how to say it, asked a great question. What spices do you suggest to make this Indian style like tandoori mix garam masala? If you go to my blog, rainbowplantlife.com, I have a recipe for tandoori um, roasted chickpeas with sweet potatoes. So I roast the chickpeas with some Indian spices um, and then I stuff them into sweet potatoes. There's a raita, there's an Indian cilantro sauce. It's really, really good. Um, and I just wanted to mention that as you guys know on YouTube, I obviously share lots of recipes, but I share even more on my blog. There's so many recipes there that I don't have time to or I'm not able to share a video for. So um, if you haven't checked out my blog, I assume many of you have, just wanted to let you guys know that. And the link for this recipe, the cauliflower steaks, the printable recipe is on the blog right now as well. And also it's linked in this description box. All right, so I'm gonna put these chickpeas to the side for now and I'm gonna show you how I kind of prep the cauliflower steaks. Um, it's really simple. It's just olive oil, salt, and pepper. And the reason I'm keeping the flavor simple here is because we're gonna get a lot of flavor through the caramelized shallots and the spices and the tahini sauce. So you don't really need to doctor this up too much. And depending on how many steaks, steaks you have, um, you know, obviously that will change how much olive oil you need to use. I'd say three tablespoons is probably safe. I also don't like using um, parchment paper here because uh, I find that cauliflower roasts the best and gets like nice and browned and tender when you don't add parchment paper, especially if you have like a well-worn <laughs> baking sheet like I do. I think you get a lot better browning without the parchment paper. I do like parchment paper for baking other things, but um, I've just found with cauliflower that no parchment paper is best. Matthew Van Matre says, loving my Instant Pot cookbook. I use it every week. Best personality on the vegan cooking round and die laughing whenever baby mouth warnings are issued. Ah, thanks, Matthew. We're so happy that you love the cookbook. And uh, there might be one or two baby mouth warnings for today. So we'll see. Um, just going to sprinkle some kosher salt onto the cauliflower. Um, I mentioned this in several videos before, but I prefer to use kosher salt in cooking because I'm just going to show you like, it's so easy to pinch, right? Like this texture is like a lot coarser than table salt or sea salt. So like I have full control over how much I pinch, which I think is great for being able to control the seasonings really well in your cooking. It's also a lot cheaper than sea salt, um, which I do use sometimes, but usually for like raw applications or finishing things. Um, so that's my preference. I've talked about it a lot, but just thought I would clarify if you're wondering what kind of salt I'm using. Um, some pepper, I got a new pepper grinder, very exciting. I might enjoy that more than I should. Um, okay, so now I'm just gonna flip the steaks and you'll notice that some of the olive oil from on top has kind of transferred to the bottom. So you can just use that to rub it in. Yep, this is the, this is the steak that wasn't very neat. And a little more oil just so that they're not dry. Um, if you don't use enough, it'll, you like you'll get some browning in some spots and some burnt in some spots and then uh, it just won't be, as good as it could be. Okay. And make sure you kind of get in there and get in all the little crevices because you want it to be well cooked everywhere. Um, okay, a little more salt. Jealous of your pepper grinder. Um, I'm not someone who normally like does Black Friday because I'm like, that's just a way for me to buy things I don't need. But that was like one of my very few purchases this year around the Black Friday thing. It was like over 50% off and I was like, I need a new pepper grinder. I've had that one for like five years. Here she goes again. It even has this like light at the bottom, like in case you're doing it in the dark and you like need it to glow in the dark. I don't know why you would, but um, wrong side. Okay. Um, so I could technically fit the chickpeas on this pan, um, but I'm going to just do them on a separate sheet pan to keep it easy. 
and I could actually do three steaks across three sheet pans and then do the chickpeas on like half the sheet pan, which is probably what I would advise most people to do, like a couple steaks on one sheet pan, half the chickpeas, a couple steaks on the other pan, the rest of the chickpeas. Um, but again, it's just me, Max and I eating this, so I don't want to make too much. All right, so we've got our chickpeas on the sheet pan. Just picking off a couple more loose skins that decided to remove themselves. And you don't need too much oil on the chickpeas. I'm gonna say like two to three teaspoons. Um, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. And of course some salt and pepper as well. Aiden Podcast asks a good question. You want to scroll down for that, Max? What is the most annoying question that you get asked as a vegan? Mine is, why don't you just make an exception tonight? Or what about hurting plants? That's a good question. Um, yeah, I feel like the exception thing is annoying. But I honestly, I just don't get that that much anymore. Um, and I feel like if I do, it's often just in jest because people know by this point that I'm not making an exception, that it's not a diet or something, and I can like cheat. Um, let's, what, what, what do you think is an annoying question? I, video on this what, I do? Surprising things. Oh. Um, I do have a video coming out, uh, in January, actually, I think just in a couple weeks about some of the things that are a little bit annoying <laughs> about like the kind of the annoying questions that people ask you and how to respond to them and how to approach them. Um, so I don't want to give too much away. Um, but I, I usually feel like when I get annoying questions, I just, I just, I don't know. Like I, it doesn't annoy me so much anymore unless it's like said rudely because I'm like, people are often asking from a place of either curiosity or ignorance. Um, and I'm not going to expect them to have like the baseline knowledge that I have about why I went vegan and the reasons you should go vegan. Um, so I try to give people a little bit of, uh, I don't know, not a pass, but like I try not to get upset about it because unless it's said with like, like a clearly bad intention, I just, I just try to give people the benefit of the doubt. All right, so our oven is already preheated at 425 Fahrenheit. I think that is 218 Celsius. Um, and I'm gonna stick these in there. These cauliflower steaks will need 25 minutes and then I'll flip them and the chickpeas, I feel like 30, 35 minutes, like it just kind of depends. I'll check them when I flip the steaks and see how they look. Oh, we got a nice super chat from Charlie. Thanks so much, Charlie. Hi, Nisha, no question, just wanted, oh, that's so sweet, thanks for all your hard work. Appreciate that, Charlie. Um, great profile photo, by the way. Um, cool, okay, so. Let me set a timer for that. Mm. I'm not sure how this timer works. I'm turning on the snow effect to make this more interesting. Oh. Look at our, our nice little holiday snow effect. It's quite delightful. Thanks, Max. Max is behind the camera doing fun stuff. Okay, so while the cauliflower is roasting, I'm gonna show you how to make the caramelized shallots and garlic. I'm a big fan of shallots. They've got the nice oniony flavor, but they're a little bit milder. I've already sliced up most of them to save time. Max, you wanna put the iPhone camera on? Um, they're sliced pretty thinly, about an eighth of an inch. And to save time, I highly recommend using a mandolin for this if you have one. Um, you don't have to, I mean, if you don't have one, a knife works great, a sharp knife works great. But we have this handheld mandolin slicer and I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it works. It's fabulous. My assistant Hannah 
got me onto this. I have like a full size mandolin, but it's so nice to have like this small handheld one, but safety first always. Um, it comes with a, a guard that you can use, but I prefer to just wear this glove. I feel like it gives me uh, more mobility and flexibility, but I don't actually need it yet. So um, this recipe calls for four large shallots. This is about a large shallot and you wanna slice them very thinly, basically as thinly as you can. And usually shallots come like, usually there's like two in one. This still counts as like one shallot though. Leonardo, thanks so much. It's so cool you're tuning in from Brazil. It's really cool to see how international this community is. And if you are tuning in late, late at night from anywhere, thanks for, for joining us. I'm sure it's bedtime for some of you. Okay, it doesn't display correctly on the screen, but there's another super chat. Timekeeper, thank you so much for your super chat. I appreciate it, thank you. All right, so our shallots are peeled. If you don't have a mandolin, you're just gonna slice it this way, like into rounds. But let me show you how wonderful this mandolin is. And this is gonna slice it about an eighth of an inch. Like, look how fast this is, it's delightful. And anytime we're doing something thinly sliced, whether it's onions or shallots or zucchini um, or potatoes, like I have a new recipe for scalloped potatoes that is amazing and I highly recommend you make it for the holidays. Um, this thing, this mandolin, just so quick and it's like so small, so it's super convenient. And if anyone's interested, um, we can pop it in the chat below so you can check it out. I think it's like $17. And the benefit, again, of using a mandolin, aside from it being quick and easy, is that you will get even slices, that it's a little hard to get them super even when you're cutting by hand. And when you get them super even, that means it cooks evenly. I made myself some tea earlier. Okay, so our shallots are ready. Chantra says, hi there, I just wanted to tell you that your chili recipe is the bomb. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy you, you loved it. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have a chili recipe on my YouTube channel, kind of like my attempt at creating the best possible vegan chili while keeping it like still plant-based and delicious and all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so for the garlic, I've already sliced up most of it. I'm going to pull it over here to the front of the cutting board so you can see. Get some eyes on that thinly sliced. I find that a smaller knife is helpful for slicing garlic just because the garlic itself is pretty small. So that's what I'm doing here. And these knives I absolutely love. They're from Khan Kitchen, K-A-N, and um, they're super sharp, they're, they're Japanese, I love them, and I really recommend them. So we're just gonna cut the garlic thinly. One last slice, come on. Nope, okay, it doesn't want to be sliced. And when we kind of caramelize the shallots, we'll also add the garlic later. And when you slice them like this and, and, and kind of shallow fry them like this, they get like crispy, kind of like garlic chips, if that's a thing. Um, it's really good. Okay. So this is eight cloves of garlic thinly sliced and four large shallots. So for anyone who's just joining, we are making cauliflower steaks, roasted cauliflower sticks with chickpeas, caramelized shallots and garlic and an herby tahini sauce. 
And this is what I would call like a signature Nisha dish because it's not like an actual recipe that you would Google. It's not like mashed potatoes or mac and cheese or chili, um, but it's something that I think is super flavorful, fun, gourmet, like exciting, and um, just gonna kind of impress your taste buds. So that's what we're doing today, and that's why I love this dish. Uh, Gail asks if the mandolin works for the garlic or too small. I think it's too small. I haven't tried it myself. Maybe if you get like a really fat, enormous garlic clove, that could work. All right, Max, I think we're ready to go to the stove. So we're gonna get a camera set up on the stove over here so you can also see it. Jim says, Q, hello. Just wanted to say thank you for how you express eating foods that make you happy and the idea that veganism isn't a diet but a way of life. It's helped me a lot and has been inspiring. Thanks so much, Jim. I really appreciate it. Yeah, um, veganism for me is definitely not a diet. It's a way of living, but it's also, I think, made me a better cook. It's made me a more interesting cook. It's helped me like fall in love again with cooking and just being really excited to like try different things with plants. So I'm glad that it's helped you as well. Thank you. All right, so for our shallots and garlic, I'm gonna head over to the stove. We've got a camera on the stove here, yes, okay. So I'm gonna heat this over medium heat. This burner is a little tricky as to what medium heat actually is. It's one of those power burners. It's like all power or nothing. I think that's probably good for now. And we're gonna add some olive oil to our frying pan. This is just a 10 inch stainless steel, stainless steel skillet. You could use a nonstick skillet. That's totally fine. Okay. I'm gonna let the oil heat up for a bit. And then we'll caramelize the shallots for about 10 minutes. Um, once they're nicely golden brown, we'll add the garlic, another five, seven minutes. Then we'll add a couple spices. Um, we've got whole cumin seeds, whole coriander seeds. Um, you can get those at most grocery stores these days, um, but if not, they're always available. Indian grocery stores, probably Middle Eastern grocery stores. Um, if you can't get them in the next few days and you really wanna make this, you could try ground cumin and ground coriander in about half the amount. Um, but you wanna just cook them for maybe 20, 30 seconds so they don't burn because they cook a lot quicker than whole spaces. Oh, and we're also gonna add with the spices some Aleppo pepper. I've mentioned this before, I love this stuff. This is a chili pepper that's originally from Aleppo in Syria. Unfortunately, it's not really grown there as much anymore because of all of the fighting in the Civil War in Syria. It's like hard to, to source it there, but um, it's a little fruity, it's a little smoky, it's a little earthy, less spicy than like crushed red pepper. So a great option for the baby mouths, there you are. Um, but it's also just really nice and flavorful. It's a little softer, it's a little oily, not oily, but like it has moisture to it. So I just love this stuff. And um, my favorite brand to buy it from is Burlap and Barrel, which is my favorite spice, bl spice brand in general. Um, okay, I think it's time to add the shallots. In we go. And we'll season the shallots with some salt. I think we maybe just lost the camera for a second, but we should be good now. Just a little salt. We don't need too much at this stage. And I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes for the shallots. And I'm not gonna use my voice assistant who shall not be named because I don't want any viewers to respond. And you wanna stir the shallots occasionally. You don't need to do it too often. Um, once they do start to get really nice and brown though, you'll wanna stir them a little more occasionally, a little more frequently, I should say. Um, let me get our tahini sauce going in the meantime. All right, so for our tahini sauce, it's only like five or six 
seven ingredients may be very simple. The food processor does all the work, it takes like five minutes. You can also make this ahead of time. You can make it three, even four days ahead of time. So um, saves a little bit of time on the day of cooking. Get my ingredients over here. Give this a stir. And as you're cooking them, the shallots will kind of break apart on their own, like into individual rings. You can kind of speed that process up on your own if you want by doing it with your spatula. Um, I think I saw a question about a tahini replacement for an allergy. For this particular recipe, I think cashew butter would probably be your safest bet. Um, it's neutral enough that you're not going to like taste it in the same way you would taste peanut butter, which is why I wouldn't suggest peanut butter. I'd say cashew butter would be your best bet. If not, then almond butter would be your second best bet. One more thing over here. Okay, so this tahini sauce is something like I make all the time or some variation of it. My favorite tahini brand that's like available online, pretty affordable for as good of the quality it is, is Sum Tahini. Um, you can get it on Amazon, it's divine. I know some people say they don't like tahini and maybe they don't, but if you have a good tahini, it's like light years better than a, a, not, than a not great tahini. Um, another good option is the Whole Foods 365 brand, just like their house brand makes a really good affordable tahini. Um, I also really love Seed and Mill if you can find it. It's a little pricier and not as available widely, but if you do have access to it, it's liquid gold. Um, all right, so I've got, this is a heaping third of a cup of tahini. I've already measured it out, 85 grams for anyone who likes to measure in grams. And we'll just grab a spatula so we can get it all in there. Yes, there's also really good tahini at Middle Eastern grocery stores. I should have said that as well. Um, and they'll probably have someone who can help you kind of pick out stuff. That's like another benefit of shopping at your local ethnic grocery store um, is that usually the people there are pretty knowledgeable and like friendly and willing to like help you figure out what you need to get and give you some recommendations. Um, okay, what else are we going to add? We're also going to add parsley. So it's going to be like an herby tahini sauce. And when I make um, anything raw with parsley or cilantro, um, it's totally okay to use the stems as long as they're not too thick. So like the bottom of this stem, just maybe I'll show you over here. That's okay. The bottom of this stem, like... Move yourself over. Sorry. Okay, so the bottom of this stem is too thick, but the stem is like upper, like like higher up on the parsley, totally fine to use. So I'm just gonna add that in there like that. And that's like a half cup, give or take. We're also gonna zest one lemon. Give the shallots another stir. So this is what the shallots look like after five minutes, by the way, five and a half minutes. And the benefit, again, of using that mandolin is that they're cooking pretty evenly because they're sliced evenly. So whenever I use lemon zest, I make sure to wash the lemon really well. And the lemon zest is going to just add this nice, bright, kind of slightly floral, citrusy taste. 
I've mentioned this a lot in my videos, but lemon zest actually has more lemon flavor than lemon juice. So I try to use it as often as I can. All the essential oils in the lemon live in the peel out here. Okay, that's almost all of the zest. Looks good. Okay. We're also going to add the juice of the lemon. So just slice your lemon. Use my convenient juicer. And this is one medium lemon. You should get three tablespoons of juice from a medium lemon, as long as it's like a fairly juicy one. Some lemons and limes are not as juicy, and so you might get like two tablespoons from a lemon. But I always, encourage you to taste before you, you know, serve a sauce or serve a recipe in general. So if you feel like it's not lemony enough for you, you can always add more. Kimberly Allagood says, thanks for the awesome recipes, Nisha. Is your next cookbook going to follow any particular theme? Um, it's not gonna be like an Instant Pot specific cookbook or anything like that. It's gonna be like a more general vegan cookbook. But basically it's gonna be like my approach to making vegan food taste freaking amazing and super flavorful and like all of my secrets, all of my tips wrapped into one book. Um, okay, I'm also going to add one fat, fat garlic clove. If you can see, this is a big boy. I'm just going to roughly chop it up so the food processor doesn't have to do all the work because it might not really chop up as much if I leave it that big. And what else? We're going to do a little bit of cumin, just like a quarter teaspoon. Also, I'm out of cumin. I think that's all I have. This is okay, says the naan recipe was super easy and delicious. Thank you. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah, so if anyone loves Indian food and you miss naan because most restaurants don't serve you vegan naan, I've got a great vegan naan recipe on my channel. It is surprisingly easy. And it's like, I don't know, like seven ingredients. It's like very, very simple. Um, this sauce is quite tangy from all the lemon juice, so we're gonna add just a little bit of maple syrup um, to kind of balance it out. Half a tablespoon. I've got four minutes. I'm gonna check on the cauliflower, just do a real quick peek. Oh no, yeah, no. It does actually probably needs five more minutes. Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not exactly sure what medium heat is on this burner. I think it's a little bit lower than it normally is because usually at this point the, the shallots are more golden. So we'll just give them a couple more minutes. And that's why I try to, in my recipes, also give you visual markers. So like when the shallots are browned, when the garlic is browned, when the cauliflower is for, you know, has some browning on top, like I try to give you those visual markers because everyone's oven, stove, pan, et cetera, is different.
All right, I think that's it for our tahini sauce, so let's start blending it. Uh, we're also gonna add a little bit of water um, after we blend it to help it come together. We'll need to scrape down the sides and then give it another blend and just keep going. This sauce is so good. If you don't use it all in this recipe, lucky you because it's good with so many things. So many things the sauce is good on, uh, like a grain bowl, a salad, obviously with like falafel if you have it, with pita bread, with like just crudite as a dip. Um, it's really, really good. So it's quite thick right now, almost like a paste. So we're going to start adding in a little bit of ice water. And the ice water, the same thing it does with hummus, it makes it a little fluffy, makes it super creamy. That's what we're gonna do. Take a breather on the sauce. It's time to add the garlic now. I'm gonna get eyes on that next. Add the garlic now and set a new timer. Once you add the garlic, you want to stir a little more frequently because garlic will burn more quickly. Okay, let's get this out of the way. All right, so back to our sauce. Let's, oh, is that the cauliflower timer? All right, I'm going to check on that in a minute. Uh, okay. I'll show you what this looks like when it's done blending so you can see the, the consistency, but you want to add as much ice water until you kind of get the texture that you're looking for. It should be creamy but spoonable. And you'll need to scrape down again a couple times as you go. So I always do like three tablespoons ice water to start with, and then if I need an extra one, I will. Um, it'll also thicken as it rests. the cauliflower hang out for five more minutes maybe. I've been having problems with my oven recently so it's possible it's taking longer than usual. The other day our oven turned off three times in one day and it was very stressful. Okay.
I think I'm gonna add one more spoon of water. It's a little too thick right now. Uh, Susan says use a small convection tabletop oven, does it matter? Um, we have a convection um, burner for like sauteing, like for like a stove, an induction cooktop, right? Uh, I'm not sure that's what she's asking. Oh, she okay. She might be asking if like she has a oh. toaster oven. Oh. Thing. She's misinterpreted the question. That's fine. Oh, probably. I, I mean, I don't have one. I don't know for sure. Um, I'm going to show you what the sauce looks like in a sec. Where should I put the sauce up? Okay, so this is what our sauce looks like. So you can see it's pretty creamy, but it's still, you can like spoon it. Again, it's kind of a personal preference. If you want it a little thinner, add a little more water. Give this another stir. All right, our garlic is almost done, maybe like a minute. I'll answer a little couple questions if I can in the meantime. Tattoo joke, Dr. Doak. <laughs> Sorry if I got that. Best meal to introduce a meat lover to vegan food. Uh, two responses. One, might not come as a surprise if you watch my channel. It's the red lentil curry. It's my video called, if I could cook only one meal for a vegan skeptic. This recipe is super popular with omnivores. Um, I think they're just like surprised that something totally plant-based can taste that good and also be easy. And then for someone who really wants like the taste of meat, I would say my Crunchwrap Supreme would be a great option because like who doesn't love a Crunchwrap Supreme? Um, one more question, Kate. Cav C says, not recipe related, but could you tell us about your journey from law school to being a professional chef? Love your videos. Thank you so much. Um, I don't really identify as a professional chef, but thank you for thinking of me that way. Um, I didn't go to culinary school, so I don't know if I'm allowed to call myself that, but whatever. Um, so I went to law school, as you might know. Um, I loved law school, and it was only once I started practicing law that I was like, this is miserable, this is a, a lot of disillusionment. Um, it was not what I expected. I was pretty unhappy practicing two very different types of law. And I'd help. Blah. I will finish the story in a minute. <laughs> So, chickpeas. Let me. Don't have that much room. <laughs> Hold on. All right, so this is actual live cooking where you see me like sweat and not know what I'm doing because there's no, there's no space. <laughs> but we are moving along. So these onion or shallots and garlic look really good. For the last minute, I'm just gonna add the spices in there. Let's see, make sure that's good. Okay, I've got my Indian masala dubbo with my cumin and coriander seeds. And we need a teaspoon each of these, or teaspoon each of, yes. And a teaspoon of the Aleppo pepper as well. If you don't have Aleppo pepper, just use 
crushed red pepper, but maybe like just a quarter teaspoon or a half teaspoon, depending on how spicy you like things. It's not supposed to be a spicy dish. It's really just there for like a little bit of a kick. But I mean, if you love spicy food, make it spicy. And now we're just gonna stir pretty frequently for one minute. And there's just like so much flavor in this small amount of stuff right here. When you cook down the shallots for that long, you release all the sugars, they get nice and toasty and caramelized. It's so good. And I'm gonna show you what I will do with the cauliflower steaks when I'm done with this, just so I don't want it to burn. Back to my story about being a lawyer. <laughs> I practice two very different types of law. One corporate, like big law office downtown Manhattan, and one nonprofit, very different. I was pretty unhappy in both of them and just came to the realization that I didn't want to wake up unhappy every day and like dread going into work. Um, and as I mentioned, I had always loved cooking for family and friends. And so I just started posting photos of my food on Instagram, just as like a hobby, kind of started to take off from there. And um, here I am, short, question. short you, version. How do your parents feel about it? Um, let me get this off the stove first. Okay, so we're going to add it to this plate here. Do you want, you want to switch the camera angle? Uh, I have it on the watch. Okay. So we're going to add the shallot garlic mixture to a paper towel, like just on top of a plate or whatever you want, just to get rid of the little bit of the excess oil. Um, spread them out so that they kind of crisp up a little bit. Um, what do my parents think about me no longer being a lawyer and doing what I do? So it was definitely difficult for them to accept at the beginning because they were like not, like they were concerned that like I was just lost and didn't know what I was doing. Also like if anyone is the child of immigrant parents, like you know it's a pretty common experience. Like my parents worked super hard all their lives to emphasize like the importance of education and like they thought that I was kind of giving that away. Um, but now they are my biggest fans. It just took them a little while to understand. And if you've seen any of my videos featuring them, you know that they are super happy and on board and just like very supportive and delightful. Um, okay, so our shallots and garlic are nicely spread out across this sheet pan or this paper towel, I should say. We're gonna get some eyes on this. I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle them with some flaky salt. It's gonna just bring out their flavors even more. And that is done for now. So we're gonna sit this aside, set this aside and I'll show you the cauliflower for now. We need to flip it first. So typically it would be a little more brown than this on the top, but as I mentioned, I think my oven is not, is not necessarily working at its finest at the moment. We have to get it serviced, but we got some nice browning on this side. Ooh, that one's really nice. Maybe my oven's fine. I don't know. A little snack for me. All right, let me check on the chickpeas as well. Whoops. This is what our chickpeas look like now. They look done to me, but maybe they could have another five minutes. Um, I think they're done. If you want them, if you want them super crunchy, um, stick them in for another five minutes. Just give them a taste and you can kind of decide if you want it super crunchy or with a little bit of chew left. So I'm gonna put the cauliflower back in for 10 minutes and then that should be done. Let's see if I can get a timer. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna take a little water break. It's a bit hot in here. If 
Fatima says, hello from Mexico. So cool. I love seeing where you guys are from. It's really, really, I love seeing where you guys are from. <laughs> it's really fun. All right, so our sauce is done. Let me just give it a taste. And if you have questions, now is a great time to ask them since the cauliflower is just gonna hang out in the oven and everything else is done. So you can put them in the chat box. Max will try to pull up a couple as he can. Natalie says, Australia now lives in Washington State. Oh, I wonder how you find the difference. I visited Australia a couple years ago and really loved it and just loved like the more relaxed, laid back attitude. And I feel like they focus really on like quality ingredients and like really fresh food, which I loved, at least the places we visited. All right, do a little quick cleanup. Yes. Oh, that's so sweet, Nivedita. That you're, it's 12.30 a.m. and you're still hooked. You're still tuning in. Thank you so much. Charlie Girl Music says, Merry Christmas from Kansas. Thank you so much for the wishes. Um, oh, the last thing of this dish, kind of the, the garnish at the end. Pistachios. I love these pistachios because they are roasted with sea salt. They're already roasted, so you save time. They're already shelled, so you save time. And the only ingredients are pistachio and sea salt, so that's nice too. These are from Aldi, and they're also really affordable. So the fun thing about pistachios is, um, if you've never tried this, I'm gonna show you something really fun to do with them. I'm gonna keep about half of them over here and just chop them. Just like a rough chop doesn't need to be fine. Lori asks, do you get cooking nervous live? Um, I don't get nervous in, in the sense of like, will I say the wrong thing or whatever? <laughs> Hopefully I don't seem nervous. It's more like, will I burn myself? <laughs> will my oven stop working? <laughs> will I forget to check something because I'm paying attention to what's going on the screen. Um, mostly that kind of stuff. Shh. Um, we're getting questions about your Christmas menu. Uh, where, where's that? Um, the Real Mad Brilliant says, what is your favorite, absolute favorite dish to have on Christmas? You know, I would say one of the favorites, I don't know if I have an absolute favorite, one of the favorites is uh, my vegan Wellington because it's just like this really fun, hearty, meaty thing that like everyone loves whether they are vegan or not. It's really beautiful. It's like you put a lot of effort to, into it and it feels like it's worth it because it's so good and it's a holiday and you like want to impress people. This year I'm really excited about having my cheesy scalloped potatoes on the menu. Um, the best comfort food. Like, honestly, I really hope you guys make it because it's like one of the most delicious things I've made recently. Um, what was the other thing I was gonna show you? Oh, so for the pistachios, if you've never done this, you're in for a treat. If you take roasted pistachios, again, there's, these are salted already, and you grind them up in a spice grinder, it basically turns into this like pistachio dust that's like cheesy, almost tastes like nutritional yeast. It's like nutty and cheesy and delicious. I don't know why like roasted pistachio, roasted pistachios themselves are delicious, but when you grind them up, it's even, even tastier. <laughs> So you can see it's fully ground up. So if you have a spice grinder, definitely recommend doing this. It's so good. I don't know how it's so good. 
but it is. And then when you sprinkle this on top of everything, it kind of looks like this golden dust. I don't know, it's very beautiful. Um, someone asked, what's your favorite kitchen appliance? A food processor, super, super, super helpful. I would say a, a spice grinder because I cook with a lot of spices. Um, that mandolin I showed you earlier is a new favorite. Um, good sharp knives, a must. Fatbox says, did you experiment with unique recipes as much before going vegan? Absolutely not. My diet was like super boring before I went vegan. I made the same stuff all the time. And to be fair, I was working a full-time job, not in food, so it wasn't like entirely my fault. I was a lawyer, so I was like working a lot, but I would eat almost the same stuff all the time. And I was not very adventurous in terms of eating or cooking. So I feel like going vegan, I had to be more creative because I had to like, okay, like, will I enjoy the taste? of umami stuff like cheese and meat, but I'm not gonna eat them because I don't wanna eat animals. So like, how can I recreate something with all of those flavors that's still really tasty, but is 100% plant-based? So it definitely made me more creative. Purva says, when you started YouTubing, can you give us a little insight on the challenges and hurdles you faced in starting and how did you overcome them? Oof, a lot of challenges. <laughs> I basically had no idea what I was doing when I started YouTube. Um, if you watch some of my earlier videos, I don't, you know, you don't need to do that or anything, but you could tell I'm like awkward and uncomfortable because I didn't really know, like one, I think it takes time to get comfortable on camera, but two, like I didn't really know why I was doing YouTube, I think. And so once I like honed my value proposition and once I understood more personally, like why am I here? What do I want to teach people? Um, that became a lot easier. Um, I think in social media in general, it's really hard to stand out from the crowd. And so for me, I had to like think about, okay, what sets me apart? What makes me unique? And one of the things I think that makes me unique is like that I can teach you really well how to cook. And I don't think that I was doing that when I first started YouTube. Um, and so once I was like, tried to like stop listening to the noise and look at what other people were doing, that definitely helped me find more of my niche. Okay. Crazy Sim says, your vegan recipes are the first ones I tried where I was actually impressed with the flavor. I can tell how much hard work you put into each one. Thank you, that means a lot to me. Um, I do put a lot of work into my recipes. I don't say that to like ask for thank you or anything. It's more that like I want every recipe I share to be excellent because again, my end goal at the end of the day is to get more people to eat plants. Um, even if not everyone becomes vegan, like my goal is to make sure that you know, more people are eating more plants and less animals. And so I want you to be impressed because if you're not vegan, you have no interest in vegan food and the first vegan dish you try is some random thing online and it turns out to be terrible, you're more likely to have this perception that all vegan food is terrible. And so that's one of the main reasons I work so hard to make every recipe I share really, really good. I saw someone asked if I had any professional cooking training. I don't. As I mentioned, um, I think earlier, I just kind of taught myself at home and um, I keep learning every day. I think that's one of the most fun parts of the job. All right, I'm gonna clear some space out here. Check on our cauliflower. Ooh, she look good. She look nice. She look good. Uh, the recipe is done. We just need to assemble everything. Uh, I'll answer a couple more questions in the meantime. Okay, so everything is pretty much done now. We're just going to assemble it. And again, if you roasted some of your cauliflower florets, you could just like serve them on the side. It's Again, it all tastes like cauliflower at the end of the day. Um, so don't worry about that. Get a nice, beautiful brown steak here. 
another beautiful steak here. And if you have like a serving tray, this would be a great time to use it. Again, it's just Max and I, so I don't wanna like make a big plate of it. Um, so I'm just doing two for now so you can see. Grab some of these chickpeas. Uh, grab this sauce, this delicious sauce. Uh, Inez says, Nisha, what is your approach to study and learn more about food and your main source of inspiration? I love your work. I'm a huge fan from Portugal. Thank you, Inez. Um, honestly, like experimentation in the kitchen a lot. Um, eating out, I feel like I learn a lot from. Like I'll have a recipe at a restaurant and I'll like, love how they've paired certain flavors together and want to do it at home myself. Um, watching other people cook, like professional cooks or even non-professional cooks like on YouTube. Um, I learned so much watching the Food Network growing up. I think the farmer's market like gives me inspiration like, oh, like I haven't cooked with radishes in a while, like let me get some radishes. And then I'll like sometimes look at recipes from like New York Times cooking or Bon Appetit, like how are they pairing radishes? Like what other flavors are they using? And that gives me a lot of inspiration. Honestly, I get a lot of inspiration from non-vegan recipes just because there's so many more out there. And so I'll say, okay, like, I really love what they did with, I don't know, some sort of meat. Let me see if I can do that with tofu. Or like, I really love how they paired shallots and garlic with spices. And like, I might use that as inspiration for this dish. Um, so really just like consuming a lot of food content, I think, um, and just experimenting in the kitchen a lot. All right, I'm gonna add about half the shallots here. Might add a little more sauce depending Again, it's a very personal thing, like how saucy do you want your, your, your stuff? Just had a little bit of the sauce, so good. Mm. And then the pistachio dust, or the chopped pistachios, or both. It just really makes this so pretty. by the way. Great wine as well. Again, you don't have to do the pistachio dust if you don't have a, a spice grinder. Just the chopped one is totally fine. Up to you. Tamara says, have you ever thought about opening up a restaurant? No. <laughs> Everyone I've talked to who owns a restaurant, it's so stressful. Even if you're not the one cooking every day, like it's just so stressful. Um, I don't think it's right for my personality. I'll just say that. Adam says, sauce and spice equals life. Yes, 100% agree. You need a lot of sauce, sauciness in your life and a lot of spiciness in your life. Um, Trinity says, is there a beginner's spice list for getting into Indian curries and stuff? I live in Maine, have limited access to a lot of Indian spices. Um, so I would say definitely cumin and coriander. If you can do both ground and whole cumin and coriander, that would be great. Turmeric, obviously, um, maybe like mustard seeds. Um, some Indian spices are things that you probably already have, like cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg. Um, yes, there, there's a couple more that I'm forgetting. I always get this question and like I, I need to just have it memorized. Um, but I would say start with those for now and you can always Google things too. Like I'm sure there's a, an answer to that, like starter kit for Indian spices. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Shaylin, thank you so much. That's so generous. That's, wow. Thank you so much. I'm very honored and that was very sweet. I appreciate it. Um, I, and thank you for saying that you appreciate me. That's so sweet. The mutual appreciation. Um, I'm going to dig in, have a little bite. Give you some tasting notes. Wish that I could maybe share it with you guys at home. But hopefully you guys will be able to make it this week. Um,
People love when you chew in my YouTube comments. Sorry. I don't know how else to not chew, but chew. So, holiday meal slash holiday questions. If you are having a small holiday dinner and it's mostly people who eat plant-based, this would be a great main dish because you've got the protein from the chickpeas, you've got healthy fats from the nuts and the tahini. But if you're having like a bigger dinner with a lot of people who aren't vegan, I would serve this as a side dish just because a lot of omnivores are gonna think this is not satisfying enough to be a main meal, even though it is when you eat it, you'll, you'll realize that. But depends on the kind of holiday dinner you're having in terms of how you wanna serve this. Leftovers, I would serve, if you know you're only gonna have like two cauliflower steaks today, then do what I did, which is keep the other two separate. So you don't wanna put sauce on them, they're gonna get like kind of soggy. And then you can kind of store the sauce separately. The sauce will stay good in your fridge for a week in a jar. Um, forgot to give you tasting notes. Very good. <laughs> it's like really gourmet, unique. Like you really get the um, warmth from the cumin and coriander. You get like a subtle kick from the Aleppo pepper. You could add more if you want it spicier. You get this tangy nuttiness that's like super creamy and like the rich mouthfeel from the tahini sauce. Um, the cauliflower is like a little nutty itself. It's sweet, it's browned, it's caramelized. Um, but it's it doesn't taste like strong cauliflower taste. It's kind of more there as like a, a blank canvas for everything else. You get the nice like onion, 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 onion -y and garlic -y flavors from the caramelized onions and, or caramelized shallots and garlic. So just a lot of great flavors. And as you could see, like pretty wholesome ingredients, right? Like mostly vegetables, nuts and seeds. Um, so you can eat a big plate of this and not feel weighed down like you often do with holiday food. And again, it's not like a traditional holiday recipe by any means, but I love serving at least one fun, unique dish at the holiday table just because I feel like if every year you have the same mashed potatoes and the same green bean casserole, like it gets a little boring to me anyways. Why don't you talk about what else you're gonna make this year? Yeah, what else am I gonna make this year for Christmas? Um, we're keeping it pretty small, just immediate family. So I won't make too many dishes, but I definitely will be making my cheesy scalloped potatoes. Again, like I know I plugged these earlier, but they're so good. Um, it's thinly sliced potatoes coated in herby bechamel sauce with caramelized onions. It's cheesy, it's creamy, it's got the like crispy caramelized edges on the outside, but the potatoes are super tender on the inside. And so normally my parents and my sister always want me to make mashed potatoes, but I feel like I'm gonna do a different potato dish this year, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make this, and I think those are a nice contrast to each other because the cheesy scalloped potatoes is like pure indulgence. And this is like a little bit lighter and brighter. I always like to have something light and bright on the table, maybe a salad, just because all the other dishes are so heavy. So I might do a simple green salad in addition to this. What else? What else? Um, for Thanksgiving, I did some green beans that were really nice. I blistered green beans. So basically I get a hot, very, very hot wok or frying pan, add some oil, add the green beans and let them sit undisturbed for a minute and then toss them like five, six minutes until they've got like browned, blackened, blistered spots on them. And then I do kind of similar to the, the shallots we did today, caramelized shallots and garlic, maybe some, some spices. If I have vegan ricotta or vegan feta or something um, to kind of bring that together or like a red wine vinaigrette dressing, um, I might do that. And then for dessert, I don't know what I'm doing for dessert this year, but my go-to when I, when it's two days before the holiday and I haven't planned anything out is my salted chocolate tart because it takes 45 minutes. It doesn't require any baking. It tastes like chocolate fudge in pie form and it's so, so good and so easy. So I might do that because Christmas is less than a week away and I haven't, <laughs> I haven't planned anything else. Do we have any other questions? Um, I would love to know if anyone's making anything special for Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate. Maybe it's not Christmas, it's fine. Um, and if you are trying something new that you think people should try or if something you're trying something you've made many times and you think is like wonderful and would love to share with others, would love to hear what you guys are making. Nancy says, can you make a weekly meal plan? Very good question. So we definitely are trying to like work on something 
related to that in the future. I want to give too much away because we haven't like finalized anything yet, but this is definitely a request we get a lot. Um, in the meantime, in January, we will have a meal prep meal plan video coming out in a couple weeks. So stay tuned for that. Um, and stay tuned in the further future for more on that. Also a video on balanced week of meals coming up. Mm -hmm. Always make a jalapeno cornbread stuffing. Yum. That sounds delicious. If anybody is looking for a cornbread recipe, I do have one on my channel from a couple months ago. It's got that crispy crust. It's buttery. It's really good. Um, Kelly says, I will be making this for Christmas. Also scalloped potatoes. Yay. I'm really excited to hear that. Um, a reluctant mom is responding to Nancy. Check out her video on meal prep. Yes, I do have several videos on meal prep, so you can get like a weekly meal plan from that. I think I probably have like, what, three at least on my channel already? Yeah. Um, so if that's something that interests you, you can definitely check that out. Uh, I'll be making this on the barbecue. How interesting. You'll be grilling the cauliflower. Very cool. Uh, Sally says, are you still coming out with a new book? I am. <laughs> So I'm so excited about this cookbook. I think I mentioned a little bit about it earlier. Um, unfortunately, I had to take a little bit of a break um, a few months ago from it just because I had some health issues, nothing serious, but I just needed to give myself some time off. Um, so it's definitely coming. It's just a little bit later than I would like, um, but I'm glad that I was able to take some time off. So it'll probably be here in a, in a year's time. It takes a while for a cookbook to get published in the US. It takes at least a year between the time the, the author submits the manuscript and all that kind of stuff. So it'll be a little while. <laughs> Sarah says your videographer deserves a bite of that deliciousness. He does, but if I were to transfer it to him, there's all these wires here with the computer and the laptop. So maybe Max will show his face and have a bite. He was, he's not going to show his face, he says. He's going to stay behind the camera. Um, doo -doo -doo. Stephanie says, this is our first Christmas as vegans. I think I'm going to make a vegetable wellington wilt wilted greens and scalloped potatoes. That sounds nice. Nice little balance. Vegetables, carb, main dish. Hope your first vegan Christmas is delightful. Um, Crazy Sims asks, is there a link where you can recommend your favorite tahini brands? I can't find your list. I've definitely listed it in many places, um, but I'll just share the names again because I don't know if Max can link them right now. But the favorite brands are Seed and Mill, which is like the very high-end stuff that's a little harder to find. Um, Soom, which is the one I use today, Soom Foods, you can find that on Amazon. And the Whole Foods 365 brand, it's just their like store brand. It's, it's quite good, um, for, especially for how inexpensive it is. So those are the three I really like. I've also tried Barron's. I think you can buy that on Amazon too, but it's not something I've used very often, but that was also quite good. Uh, the Real Mad Brilliant also asks, where can I find your Wellington recipe? Um, so all of my recipes you can find on my blog at rainbowplantlife.com. There's tons of recipes here, even more than I share on YouTube. Um, it's pretty easy to search on the site. There's a search little magnifying icon where you can search, you can search Wellington, you'll find it easily. And you'll also find this recipe we made today there if you want to print it out and make it. Um, so I think I'm going to wrap things up because, you know, I want you to be able to get on with your day and not feel like you have to stay here with me. Also, I would like to eat this in all honesty, and I can't really eat more than one bite on camera without looking super messy. And I think Max, the cameraman, also deserves to have a little bite. So we are going to get moving. I guess we're gonna get going, I should say. We're gonna get going. Thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate every time you join a live stream, every time you watch one of our videos, leave a comment, all those things. Um, it's really special to be able to have this community and to be able to do what I love doing and to have you all here with me. And so I really appreciate it. And whatever holiday you celebrate, I hope it's wonderful. I hope it's safe and delicious. And if you make one of our recipes, of course, tag us on Instagram. I'm at Rainbow Plant Life. Um, let us know on the blog how you like the recipe and we will see you in January. We've got so many videos coming for you in January. We've got four videos, I think, in January. So a lot of good stuff coming up. Thank you guys for watching and for being here and happy holidays. Bye.